opportunity to read them. And okay. okay, would somebody like to make a motion? Accept them. I second it. And you also got a copy of the long awaited July. Wait a minute, back to the minutes. There's, there is something in there about the external for the the external for the uh, caboose. We are having internal too, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, there's one paragraph in there that says the external for the caboose. Uh, is that all be done with the it's all the same bit. It's a, uh, where's the term? Got his name here somewhere. Um, <clears throat> factor, it's going to be Wayne suit. Wayne suit. S U I T. Okay. So, well, let's see. Do you know where you're talking about? Uh, let me find. Let me bring it up here. It's it's in the minutes. From the last meeting, which was 25 February. Why am I getting this eye compass thing? Why do I have to do this, Craig? Oh, you're going through um, that civic web? Yeah. Right, that's right. Okay, here, Mr. Gilpin. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, so I just. That has been ordered for the exterior of the caboose. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. 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 Well, there will be an exterior button. Well, but yeah. Also be in well, yeah, but yeah, but that's it. Probably, probably needs to be. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't need to be changed, but that's the one thing I noticed was that it was just saying exterior in there. Huh? Are they going to do the exterior portion of it first? Or are they going to the only thing I can tell you is Rich couldn't be with us today. His wife's having back surgery, but the system is in. Has, has been received the materials and he has met with Dr. Garner two days ago to discuss where going. I know he's here because they were talking about where we mounted. So uh, I, know I think they were going to do it under the benches. Experience. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to do it under the benches, one of the benches inside the caboose. I think they're talking about that as a spot. So it'd be kind of out of the way. There are a number of places in there you can mount it though that would be out of the way. So, uh, do we need to make a correction to that? Uh, well, it, it wasn't a vote, it was just the purchase the sounds. <laughs> They'll go away someday. Um, so, was that uh, uh, a motion to accept both sets of minutes? Or are we accepting them separately? Yeah. Well, I was going to set them separately. Okay. okay, did y'all review the July minutes? Honestly, I did not even see the original five minutes, so I didn't review them. Um, yeah. Does somebody want to approve the minutes from July, or do you want to reread them? You make the motion. Did you? Made the motion to also approve the February minutes, but I don't now know about we'll the. Make a motion to approve the July ones. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> you got yourself a microphone, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, minutes. All right. Now, what do what do we need to do here with the ordinance to change the town code language? Well, Kelly's going to bring up the ordinance on the screen over there, and um, basically, all it's doing is all the things that you asked it to do. Um, decrease the, the size of the board from five to seven. Reducing the need for a quorum to three, and then it'll take the, um, the council member appointed by the town council will then become a voting member. Um, yep. So it's just a matter of then going on in um, uh, section E will remove the lengths of all of these, uh, uh, the lengths of all of the terms because you're no longer starting up. Your existing right. council, so mm -hmm. the need for that language wasn't necessary anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, there's even a spelling correction in there. I happened to find something wasn't capitalized, but mostly this accomplishes all the things. Uh, I can explain it as exhaustively or as, as briefly as you'd like. Well, I think we all understand that it's been on it forever, but how the terms were working. I'm not sure you say yeah. need for that anymore. 
There should be no more limit as to the number of consecutive terms. Okay, good. Okay. I had talked to Jim. There is one type there in terms A. They've got that A in a capital A. I don't know if that A's correct or not. Where is this? Right under so after the other scoring, then there will be no more there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Terms. Yeah, right, right at the end of where the pointer is. Oh, Kelly's just. Oh, Kelly's doing that. Where is, where is she? We'll make a note of that. Okay. <laughs> there was there was lowercase t in there somewhere that I uh, that I changed, and um, this period um, was no longer necessary and became a sunny call. I mean, it's silly little things like that. The language, but yeah, yeah, we can definitely yeah. use that. Okay. Um, I I explained this to Jim. At some social event somewhere and um, therapy. <laughs> oh, therapy. It wasn't a social event. <laughs> and, social. and he agrees. I mean, he's been on Parks and Rec forever and, you know, but the council person always had a vote um, on beautification and everywhere else. And um, and all of those pre-existing commissions are five members and an alternate. Um, when Design Review Board came in, it was got complicated and was rewritten and Danielle, no, she wasn't even part of it. But, and then, so then when we rewrote, when we redid re this, we copied it after the Design Review Board, which was seven members, eight, um, you know, eight with, with the alternate mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it was just, it was, and the council member was not a vote, not a voting member, not one of the voting members. And they always had trouble getting a quorum. I mean, they were calling people and everything. They have recently changed it. I'm not sure as drastic as this, but they have recently, Design Review Board has kind of joined in with the Planning Commission and re, re kind of, kind of, Change no, things a little no, bit. They no, haven't joined, but they no, they haven't joined. They work in concert with one another, and the design review board has adopted some standards for the town to make the job much easier. Because they would go by case by case by case by case basis. Yeah. Sometimes it would be an entire meeting of just signs. Yeah. So there's a sign standard in the town play now that you know is handled at the planning level and doesn't need to tax their time because they were they were going on about every detail. Yeah. So section one will remove the yeah. um, seven members and replace them with five, and we will um, uh, no more need to be inside the town of La Plata and remove that uh, qualifications that two members need to be because there's only five members. That's now quite a bit. Uh, and in section E, we'll remove the term limits um, because they're no longer relevant um, as a non-startup. In in section F. Uh, we changed the language as uh, I believe it was, uh, Mrs. Mudd encouraged instead of may, it reads shall appoint. And uh, if uh, we go a little bit further, um, yeah, it just reiterates the language that it's five and therefore three would constitute a quorum. So we're we not having any requirement for any of the members to be inside the town to play anymore. No, none, none of the other commissions have it, have that that phrase in there about residents of the town. Okay. And also back there in section, I keep bouncing around, sorry about that. Uh, in this section here, um, in, in the middle there, section F, um, the term of the, of the uh, rather the ex officio non-voting has been removed and just the council will serve as a voting representative to the commission. In paragraph E, you're saying that it needs to be They'd be assigned for three years, but they stay as long as they want. Or right. So is there a three year limit at all on that? Well, there is. And um, we went through that just last month um, where um, Mrs. Chandler's uh, tenure had ended and the board voted to renew it. So mm -hmm. it's it's an opportunity to to call the herd, if you will, as you know, or if someone no longer wants to continue well, to, serve. Someone wants to serve. Now we had that with Mike Pellegrino. When his term was up and I called Mike and Mike said, you know, my job is just fairly demanding. I don't get to the meetings. I think you'd be much better off to have somebody who so doesn't want to respond so they can participate. So it gives them the opportunity 
Uh, let's see, when you when you were appointed, Jane, I think you were appointed, was it one year or two years? I called you last year and I asked yeah, you. Yeah, I know you called me. Uh -huh. you. So I think it was two years. Yeah. You were filling uh, you were filling somebody else's place. Uh -huh. yeah. So yeah, it's still a uh, stock. It in there. Yeah. Um, it's it's a whole lot less intimidating than appointed for life. Um, so I think that constitutes all the changes you wanted to see um, made. Um, this will be introduced to the town council next um, one of the next two work sessions in April. It'll appear before them uh, in the business meeting um, to be ratified and signed. And then uh, 15 days after that, it will become effective. So you're talking about mid-May. So uh, we have, rather than <laughs> go through and tell somebody, well, you're no longer on the commission, we're just going to let those expire because um, it constitutes, okay. Do you all want me to go through all this, whose terms are up when or whatever? No. No, okay. I don't think so. I mean, you just figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. This so those of us who will probably be subcommittees will continue to attend the meetings until our term is up. Yeah, but I mean, you, yeah, but you will be asked when your term, and you, I mean, your term isn't up now until 24. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then you will be asked, do you want to continue on? Okay. Or would you rather be a sub on the subcommittee? Okay. So, you know, sorry. Um, a good example of a subcommittee would be Bob Curran. He's a little, I guess Stuart can run the train, but Bob is a subcommittee. He's not actually on our commission, but he's the one that's built the model train, and he's the one that comes to when it's, the museum is open and runs the train. So um, he would be a good example of a subcommittee. Okay. Um, are you pleased? Do you want to make a motion to accept this? So they can go forward to the town council. I move that we accept this. Do I have to read the, the motions? No, just just move that we accept the ordinance as. as a Is it on here? The ordinance number on here? That's uh, ordinance two two dash zero three. Historic preservation. Okay. I move that we accept ordinance number. 22-3. As amended. <clears throat> As amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Hi there. <laughs> the meeting the, the meeting the other night, the mayor's Matt, Mike went and she had to push it over to okay. yeah, uh, her next door tour. And it was really formal. They had them up there and Everybody seated down here really nice and the town manager's mic was fine down here, but the mayor's wouldn't work. The mayor <clears throat> had been warned that he had to talk into his microphone, so he is an inch from it the whole night. Oh, okay. He yeah, yeah. It was yeah. next item on the agenda is the purchase of the plexiglass for the train model display. Now, um Bob Curran has sent me an overall listing of the items. Some he will be purchasing, some will be bought through the town. Uh, he has his popular board listed here, approximately $10. It's two, three pieces of that. The major expense here is the plexiglass itself, which is 60 inches by 24 inches by 3 slash 22 inch, I guess that's the best of it. <laughs> and that is $267 plus the shipping. So the total cost of the plexiglass would be $406.34. Now he's put a note here. We'll pick up the lumber locally and submit receipts. I'm not worried about the taxes. For two, I can work with whomever I need to in order to ensure the plexiglass is ordered correctly. Order the plexiglass from, and he has the um, website of where the plexiglass is going to come from. So what he wants to do is come in and have the town actually make the purchase. 
So whether he'll work with the town treasurer or whether he will work with you or Kelly, I mean, it's coming through your department. <laughs> yeah, and having spent three days in budget meetings this week, yeah, we, we can we can figure we can that out. That out. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if he's planning on going ahead and putting the plexiglass up. I gather it's portable. It can come up and down as we need to to work on the models that will go on the display. Is this right, Stuart? I haven't seen his design, but the way he described wanting to do it, it should be something that he can put on and take off as needed, or actually reach over top of as needed. The whole idea was to stop smaller children from being able to reach and grab things off the display. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, first off, we'll need a vote to, to go forward and, and purchase these materials at the cost of $406.34. So I need a motion for that. I'm on a rolling motion that we go proceed with the <laughs> with the um, purchase of the plexiglass and materials. I second. Okay, now do we have any further discussion? Does anybody have any, any need for clarification on that? Uh, who's going to install it? Um, oh, I'm sure. Bob, I'm Bob sure Bob's going to. Okay, well, that's the only question I have. Yeah, and I wouldn't know what to question. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all in favor of purchasing the plexiglass? Aye. 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 Okay, got that. And you you will want a copy of this, correct? That would be great. And in fact, if you wanted to send me a copy of that in advance, it could have been part of the exhibit. Yeah, and of course, he's, I need to identify on here that it's the historic preservation condition. And he's somewhere we missed the letter in there. But okay, I'll forward that copy of that to you. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay the best is for the summer schedule. Um, right now, we we have only scheduled four meetings or four times that the museum will be open. It's April 30th, which is the town event of uh, celebrate celebrate La Plata. And then May 7th, which is the first Saturday in May, then May 28th, which will be Memorial Weekend, and then June 25th. So um, maybe I'm premature about scheduling who's going to be the dose in those days. But I mean, you know, somebody's got to take, we've got to take turns with being docents there until we decide, are we going to eventually put it in the budget? where we would want to have a permanent docent where somebody would be paid to come in and open it and close it. When, when the Historical Society had the train station, they actually got in the grant for their docent and the docent, you know, so nobody, nobody in the Historical Society had to handle it. They had a docent that came and did it. And she got paid, I think, like $10 an hour and it was open. Just about every weekend, I believe, and she was there from like 10 to 2 or 12 to 4. But um, I don't know if that's something we want to look at for the future. And I think I should, uh, stop, sorry, go ahead. I thought last time we talked about possibly students might be able to do that as part of their. Um, we did. Yeah, community yeah, service. That might, yeah, yeah, community service. Mm -hmm. Now, if we do that, then somebody we're going to have to have somebody that's going to be willing to yes, supervise to, to, yeah, to teach them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I can. I'm willing to work with people to teach them about the exhibits there, mm -hmm. to the extent that I know and what to point out. Um, I, it seems to me that most of the time when we're open, somebody on the commission manages to get there anyway. And even when we don't think we can end up being there anyway. Yeah. So I don't think it would be too much trouble to have a docent there and that maybe as a student or a younger person, because chances are pretty good one of us will be there to supervise anyway. Um, but in the event that nobody is there to supervise, then we probably ought to have some kind of training or guidelines. Yeah, when they, when they, uh... Charles County Historical Society did it. I mean, it was an adult woman that was there. And um, of course, it was not a train that had to be run or anything, which you, whoever is the docent should know how to 
you know, from the train. I mean, that's completely business there. The thing but is, I don't want to. I don't want to be there. Either. I mean, I don't mind. I like. I love being there, but I don't want to be there without Bob Curran there, or Stewart. Mm -hmm. We can't. I mean, expect them to be we can't expect Bob to be there all the time. Yeah. But we can't put a teenager in there by herself. No, not not by herself. We can't do that. Well, that's that's not my question. I, what, I, what I just said was. That I saw Roz. I saw Roz, who was the docent forever for the historical society. At therapy <laughs> at the in the gym the other day, and was telling her about it and everything. Yeah, well, my cousin used to do it. That's how, how I'm familiar with it. Yeah, but she was paid to do it, you know. But yeah, so that's why the idea of students is a good idea in one sense. But then somebody's got to train them. Then again, somebody's got to be there with them. Whereas if we tried to get a grant, which probably wouldn't happen this year. If we tried to get a grant, then we would have an adult supervisor that would be paid to do it. The uh, I think the idea of a docent on the same person continually is the best way to go. Uh, I would suggest someone who's probably more senior mm -hmm. and that would be in costume as well, a period mm -hmm. costume type thing. You mentioned ten dollars an hour. That is cheap. Well, oh, that that was years ago. That was years ago. <laughs> okay. But but again, you know what are we talking here? Fifteen dollars an hour, let's say, is an example. You're doing four hours a day, so you're looking at sixty dollars a day. Sixty dollars into the budget of what the size the town has is minuscule, and it's only if you break your lid on your pen that that sixty dollars would show up someplace. So I don't think it's out of realm to ask for that kind of funding to accommodate something like that. You're not talking about a lot. How often are you doing it? You're doing it. 10 times a year, 12 times a year, once a month. We've got the funding in. We've got the funding now in the I mean, we've got that thousand dollars a year in the budget that's rolled over. You know, it, you know, you can't keep you should have plenty of it. You can't keep it. And I mean, that's what we're spent. Right, Craig? That's what we're spending for this sound system. And last year we tried to spend it up because, you know, it go, rolls right over into the general fund June 30th. Well, we right. spend it this year. Between what the, the sound system, I mean, although we've just spent only nine, yeah. the sound system's been approved for twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. And then we've got this plexiglass, and we've got the um, round flap we're working on. So we'll probably, you know, spend most of our budget. But the question is, so do we? Do we put this dose into our our annual budget request? Is that what we do, or? Um, now, Kelly said that sometimes people say, well, why isn't the museum open more frequently? Well, it could be open more frequently if we chose to pay a dose and to come in there every Saturday. But I mean, it makes promoting it at much more $60 an hour times. Not an hour. $60, okay. $60 a day. <laughs> I'll volunteer. And then, uh, but see, then you've got all of May, June, July, August, and September. So that's five months for five months. I think for this year we need to. We can't we can't hire people for for this year. I can't see. I mean, for this summer. And Do well, you see and train and so forth? Is the museum going to be open weekly? Is it just going to be open on these special occasions? Now, well, we can run it the way we are for one more year, but I think it's something we've got to definitely decide. Or, or, or what does the town want? Yeah. Well, when Art was still with us, he, we were open almost every weekend that first year we tried to get it going. And we didn't even have that many exhibits to see. And we had a trickling of visitors. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't particularly steady. There were some days where you hardly saw anybody at all. Then some days where you saw 10 or 12 people would come in. Uh, when we moved to this more restricted schedule and linked it to the town events or other events going on at the time, we got better attendance. Um, but I have had people ask me about it. You know, why isn't it open more often? You know, I'd like to come by and see it, but it's never open. So it seems like we need to try to find some kind of a balance, maybe try to do every weekend one, you know, every Saturday or something like that, just to see if it uh, if we can establish a a reputation for being open and and give people a chance to come in. 
Saturday the, seems like a good day because of the be, market. Because of the market. That's what I was going to say. Can, and can we can we get Kelly to yeah, redo yeah. the um, to redo the signs? Kelly's the sandwich hey, sign. Yeah, but we're, yeah. Not, we're not going to have it open every Saturday this year. That's what we're going to have. Well, yeah, but but the signs at the market, especially, and <laughs> here when, when there's an event. We're getting ready to be made for the next season, so. Yeah. I mean, the market the, opens next Saturday. I mean, what, what's wrong with the sign that we have today? I just what think they know? need to be freshened up and redone. Freshened up and redone. Okay. They've been rained on I don't know how many yeah, times. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know if you wanted the verbiage changed on them. I didn't know what we were looking Oh, no, whatever. Refresh. Well, whatever you guys want. Just, no, just, just new, you know. Training yeah. Station Museum is open today. And we put those out of market. Yeah. Is that good with you? I mean, well, I'm not the market manager, but I think I could probably talk her into it. <laughs> By the way, the market manager has never taken down those awful signs on Talbot Street that are completely, completely demolished. Are you buying some new ones this year? Those are, um, I'll let the market manager speak to that if she cares to. <laughs> That's a county road, though. I won't blame them. I uh, know, but they're our, they're our flags, right? There's like, and they so, were they were scarce and small. I mean, you know, it was a start, but um, they are just a wreck. Okay, anyway. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so, for now, are we just going to continue? When we last year, we were working sort of around the first Saturday of the month, and I kind of came up with that simply because. That's how they were running the train station museum in uh, Silver Spring. <laughs> once a month it was open and everybody knew once a month it was open. Yeah. So that sounded kind of like a good plan. And um, let's see, the 30th of April, then the 7th of May, then the 28th of May was Memorial Weekend. That's why we put mm -hmm. that one. And then June 25th was, I don't know why we picked June 25th. Last Saturday of the month, I guess. But that's as far as we've gone with the scheduling. When do we when do we do that? What? When do we? Oh, when I sent that out. Anyway. Oh my god. Anyway, gosh. anyway, yeah. Anyway. So, I think as far as the policy, the idea we even starting this year that we help with have it open at least once per month. Mm -hmm. Then if we had and try to coincide it with the special holidays as such, and like one month you're talking about you had it twice, beginning of the month and end of the month, that's fine. But at least once per month, it would coincide with town events and yeah. to publicize it. Yeah. That way you got July and you got your probably something in August. I'm not sure what but you get August. Then you got September and then that's it at that point. The other thing as far as trying to get a docent, uh, is there any way we tie with the College of Southern Maryland, someone who's taken history as a major and to do something like this as a, a project within their uh, program? Very possibly. Of course, we've got to establish that we're going to pay them and what we would be paying them before we could go to the college. We have someone who works at the college we could probably talk to. The mayor. No, she doesn't. Huh? She doesn't. She doesn't what? Work at the college. She was. Well, she was a professor there. No, no. She's not. She's not anymore. She's, oh, okay. she's teaching for University of Maryland. Okay. Um, well, she knows global she campus. She would know people. Yeah. Somebody in this room knows somebody at the college yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and the reason we stopped with June, I know why that was stopped there. We didn't go through the rest of the summer, was because we wanted to get it in the um, the calendar, the town calendar, and the calendar comes out the first April. It's for April, May, and June. So that's why we went that far, okay. just to have dates on the calendar when it comes out. I guess in another week. So, um, so you made it the fourth and twenty fifth of well, June because of the spring festival. Then May seventh. What was May seventh? Was that around Mother's Day weekend or something when people thought people would be in? Well, it's the first Saturday. That's why we you picked it. I picked. I don't remember May picking 20, it. May it's Memorial Day. Memorial and then just going out another thirty days was why it was June twenty fifth. What was the first date? I'm sorry. You said the uh, April, April 30th, 30th, May 7th, May 28th, and June 25th. So. 
So then, is that already in there? Because July 2nd is the first Saturday and the 4th of July. I know. That'll go in the July camp. I know, but why the t why did you put the 25th in there when the next week is yeah, the 4th back of back. July weekend? That puts them back to back. Do we do a little earlier? What the hell, a day in June? Well, we're having it June. She's got June the 6th on there. No. It's uh, April the 30th, May the 7th, May the 28th, and June the 25th. He was pick an earlier date from June and then go ahead and go with the July 4th weekend. Today. Let's see if it even comes out on the calendar. I don't even know if it's going to come out on the town calendar. Truthfully, I just sent, took the dates in. I have no idea. You sent them in? Yeah, I sent them in. I can check with Colleen this afternoon. So, um, so well, when, what, what was the reason for June 26th? Okay. okay. Other than, other than we were talking Memorial weekend, which was May 28th. And so uh -huh. then I just Pick oh, I see. four weeks okay. out so that we'd be open once a month. But I, I see what y'all are saying. I probably yeah. should have skipped June and just go into the 4th of July. That's confusing. Okay. 15th or something, something a little bit in the middle of June. Now, if it's on the calendar, then we have to stick with it. If it's not. That's calendar, confusing. That's confusing to me. If you want to do May 20, I mean, you, you've already established May 28th because it's Memorial Day weekend, right? Is Memorial Day the 30th? Yeah. Okay. And before it was always and, like we should be open around a holiday weekend because people are in town and looking for some place to go and something to do. So that's kind of why we looked at that. Well, that's why I think it should be July 2nd should be the next one. Well, we'll that. have to find but, out. Because it's the first Saturday and July, and then we just wouldn't have anything in June. Yeah, we were on the first Saturday of the month for a while, or first week. But, of the but month see, it was working beautifully because the holidays were falling on the first. Either my well, what are you? It, it worked perfectly last year. Well, what about the, what about the Fourth of July? That's what we did this year. We made it on the holiday when there were going to be people in said, town. What I just said was we only scheduled through June at this point. I know for the calendar. Now, I, I assumed that we would be open on the 4th of July. Okay. Now, if this is not on the town calendar, if, if yeah. it's not coming out on the calendar, we can just skip June 25th and move right to the 4th of July. Well, we have yeah. two that are kind of close, but I mean, you know, April 30th and May 7th are you know, about a week apart. And then it's like a two week gap, roughly almost three week gap. Like three week gap, yeah. And okay. then, then it was going to be like a a five week gap if we wait until the 4th of July. So that's why I stuck something in there. Again, we don't have to hold to it unless. Yeah. If What's the week prior to June 25th? Uh, that, that's a Saturday? Is that what that June 28th. It's a I don't Saturday know. of June 25th. You had, you had June 25th eight. down originally. So what's the, what's, the, what's the Saturday before that? I'm assuming that's a Saturday. I, I don't know. Um, June, the Saturday before June 26th is June 19th. 19th. No, the 18th. Oh, sorry. 18th. sorry. June 18th. So if you're, if yeah, you're this establish a, a kind of a stumbling kind of rhythm of every two no, weeks. No, we've been on the list. We're doing it on Saturday. But June 26th is a Sunday. Yes, we're, we're, okay. but the museum, oh, okay. what I had sent in was the museum oh. would be open on June 25th. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. we could back up to the 18th if it's not already in the schedule. Because I have no idea if we could put it on the, you know, the old calendar yeah, that comes yeah. out. And I just thought it'd be nice to have it on the calendar. I don't think it's going to matter that much one way or the other, but it, that's, that establishes a kind of rough rhythm of every two or three weeks yeah. instead of kind of Two weeks, one week. Well, I say if we went from Memorial Weekend to the Fourth of July, it would be five weeks. Yeah. But, well, which is fine, I guess. I mean, well, that's not. Um, I, 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 
Let's wait and see what the calendar says. Yeah. And if the calendar doesn't say the 28th of May, we will skip that and just go to the 4th of July. And not have you mean 2nd of July? So whatever it is, the 4th of July weekend is at the 2nd of July. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, the 4th of July day. We're not going to be open on the 4th of July day. That's Why not? Because it's a Monday and nothing's going on in town. That's why we had that's why we had everybody here um, for the Sunday of the Veterans Day Parade. That's when we were packed um, when there was there's, when there's something going. There's an occasion here on the 4th of July. Well, is there what's the event here on the 4th of July? I don't know, but the will be something. I mean, it is a federal holiday, isn't it? Yeah. And well, I was just in keeping, I, I don't care whether it's the 4th of July or the 2nd of July, it doesn't matter to me. I was in keeping being I don't care either. I thought you wanted to be open when the market was open. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I know. It doesn't matter to me which day but you pick. Last year we went with the, with the Sundays when there was an occasion in town and it worked out. Okay, well, if it's an occasion. But there was, was, you know, that's not a big, I mean, but the 4th of July is. Okay, the biggest thing, and I don't know, I don't know, whatever. What do you think? The town, the Fourth of July, where the most activities taking place in the town. Yeah, and if we and are doing something on the Fourth of July, which is Monday, then do it then. Yeah, but if not, we're not doing anything. If Colleen is not having a major uh, activity that day, then to go back to Saturday. Well, on the calendar, all that I see is July Fourth. Celebration 10 to 1 at Town Hall. Details, I don't. I don't okay, know. well, we don't need the details. We'll just go to the 4th of July. Yeah. That's the watermelon and the, the watermelon races and all that stuff so that you can get the fireworks later. It's 10 to. Oh, well, here. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I brought that. I had that sitting right in front of me. Oh, look. Look at this. <laughs> well, I had it. And yeah, when I came in, I picked it up. So. Okay. September. There's no activity on a Saturday in June on this schedule. So. Oh, you had. And then we move to the fourth of July, which is a Monday. Well, there's always, you know, there's the market. Well, back to the market. There's, you know, that is a big draw. Yeah, but are you going to be open on the second of July and the fourth of July? I don't think no, we've got to pick one. Yeah. No, and we're going to pick the Fourth of July, right? Yeah, I think the Fourth of July is good. There'll be flags out. People will be around town. Okay. So we'll get that on. Okay. Well, while we're doing this, let's keep going then, so I can get it to the perfect person for the next month calendar. I mean, in the next period calendar. So if we do the Fourth of July. What do you want to do in August? National Night Out. Uh, well, that's a Tuesday, though. And that's not a big, you know, that's at night in the neighborhoods. Yeah. If you do the 4th of July, you want to go with August the 6th? That would be the first Saturday of the month. I think so. Yeah, we may as well, because there's no event here other than just the concerts and National Night Out. What's Train like? station. Okay. And then in September, probably, is Labor Day weekend, September 3rd. Okay, so do that Saturday. Yeah, because okay. there's nothing here that day. Okay, so then that would be the calendar would be that would be for the next three months. Now, then there must be an October activity. There is the La Plata Fall Festival on a Sunday, October 9th. I've got the Halloween trick or treat trail going on too. That's a, that's a oh, we had a big, yeah, that was big last year. We had yeah. lots of trick or treaters. We should do two in October. Yeah. And They're then we, and in October, that's about when we're about finished. So you want to do two in October? Yeah. So we're talking about October no. 9th, 9th, Sunday, which is a Sunday. I don't mind doing that. And then you want to do the Halloween trick or treat trail? We had we had lots of people. That was that was good because we had the did did they have the okay? And so that's the ninth. The stores had the same exactly. thing as the one here too. There was one here too. Okay, okay. So October 29th. 
Okay. Now, wait a minute. Halloween wait a minute. Yeah, trip. fall festival. Yeah. And then the next is the Veterans Day Parade. That's when we were packed. That's a Sunday. November 6th. Okay. And the caboose should be finished and we should be. Pieces can be finished before that. Hopefully. What time is it? Okay. Okay. So I will get those to the powers to be at the town and we'll figure out who's going to be responsible which dates. Will we do anything on the shop small? We, uh, I don't think it's on here, but there's breakfast with Santa. I'll start with that, that's his shop small is um, it's sponsored by the Plano Businessmen's Association. And it's Thanksgiving. What's that? Okay. It's looking at December. So. Yeah, shop small is the Saturday of Thanksgiving. Um, well, let's cross that. Where we open, we the market's open. The market's all open till the end of November, correct? Well, well, that's the last day of the market. Yeah, that's the last day of the market. Nothing to sell at the station. So. <laughs> yeah, we should have two in November. The Veterans Day Parade and then the <laughs> the last Thanksgiving Saturday. We should be open. Is that being recorded? <laughs> All right, so y'all want to get on the 26th is what you're saying? Uh, November. Well, as long as everybody chips in and is willing to show up <laughs> and take turns, yeah. you know, I can we do, can be. I can do some of these so she can yeah. get too much trouble. Yeah. <clears throat> and I can rope a lady daughter or two in with me if I need to. <laughs> yeah, we could, we could <laughs> split some too. And yeah. well, I think Eddie would jump on it in a heartbeat. Uh, Katie would. Just as soon hide under the caboose. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, and I know um, Abby, you know, was really interested, but but she's graduating, and she she's graduating, and she's becoming an EMT. So yeah, she's going to be pretty busy. So competing with the rescue squad for her attention. <laughs> so okay, well, we've got a schedule. <laughs> and I'll be, you'll be submitting you yes, to get it all. Or are we being recorded? You're being recorded, and I'll, well, I'll catch okay. up when I do the minutes, yeah. but yeah. Okay. So, matters of information, update on the, mo on the model buildings for the train display. I don't have any update on that. Um, Other than what we saw in that email from... Uh, from Rick Gilpin, he Rick was, Gilpin's he, son. his son was working on... He's doing a 3D printer, printer yeah. version of the train station, mm -hmm. and the photos I saw are fantastic. It's, it's yeah. really looking nice. So. And Bob, but you know that that model might come out too big for the. If you're making it scale, see, that was one of the reasons why I lobbied them to put an HL instead of the, the larger train set because you will have only space for four or five buildings on that thing at best, and depending on which buildings you do. But if you if you're building these things and you want to have variety on the display, you can. You can put four or five up and then throughout the year change them out if you as you make them. So it shouldn't be too bad. But then you've got storage, you gotta figure out what storage where to store the ones you're not displaying at that moment. And Bob Curran is working on some things too. So whether but I think Bob and Rick are in tandem with each other. Okay. Yeah, they are. I know that Bob had purchased some some uh really they were vintage uh, model train kits for building houses that were scaled to the Lionel trains that we have or, or close to scale to them. And they, they themselves were from the 1960s, I think, but he found them at a train show somewhere and he was willing to put them together, but they're just vanilla, you know, Rambler houses and that kind of thing. There's, there's really, they're all- is, yeah. is there any way to put a table in that corner in the, in the office room? To put your display up when we when we for special I occasion. I don't see where we need to put a table. People just love that because it's. He have you seen his display? He's got buildings it's of miniature. the town. They're miniatures. They it's don't. They don't. You know the size isn't right for the for the train table, but he's put it up several times in the 
when we had the in the train in the, the train in the, in the train and then we had it in yeah and then in the train but is there room in that corner where the where the tobacco you know where the door is in the back not where there i mean there's a little there's not much space and the question is be a very narrow do you want to bring them in and out all the time not well, it's been donated to the town. No. It wouldn't be a permanent exhibit. What I ought to do is make a set for the town. Um, it, would be, to donate. it would be a challenge to find the space in that room to do it the way I've had it set up now, because about the only place I could think of would be in the little cubby areas that are made by the partitions, so that, that sort of H-shaped partition. Well, that's what I was. That well, now, that was my second thought. Could it be in what? Could it be in one of those? It would have to be glass enclosed to keep people. From and it would have to be also down low because of the displays yeah. that we have there now. We couldn't yeah. do it on the tornado display side. Where we have inside. where we have the and luggage and display now in the training yeah. room. If eventually we wanted to get like another bookcase and put, you know, remove the luggage display. We have down, let, let me move into that for one second. Actually, that's a good idea. Uh, we might be able to we have, wall we have downsized, okay, backing up a little bit. The caboose is completely cleared out. That's all done. That's ready to go as far as the uh, restoration of that. Other than the cushions, which Don is going to store somewhere to have them be done. In the in the main building, in the museum building, everything is out of there except for this table that Stuart is going to take down. Uh, Rich was there the other day to bring me an uh, invoice, so he took luggage that belonged at the PTP. He's taken that back to PTP, so we have downscaled that a little bit. But if eventually we want, we want to get rid of the luggage display, we could purchase another glass um display cabinet like we have the uh pr feral thing in or we could do something else with the pr feral thing and put the models in there they could be put on the wall shelf kind of a thing too just a, a little shelf along the edge of the wall and right now all that space in the little plato room is taken up by the posters because yeah. they're, they're hung at eye level so it'd have to be something where you um, have to vary the, the height of things so that people can and we'll want, we'll want to change the displays every couple of years. Yeah. But that one's still going to be. I don't know. They're so good right now. <laughs> Let's leave everything right yeah, now. Let's not so good worry about We talked about these rotating displays yeah. when we started this thing. And it would just be, I would just be like maybe taking new new photos of the town and putting them in the frames with the old ones, that's all, or, or just you know, swapping out the posters, but it would still be the same layout. Yeah. It would just be different pictures. Yeah. So would you would would you be willing if we if we had a permanent if we haven't had a permanent childproof display to lead to kind of donate those to the not donate them but whatever um i can or leave them there on loan for i i may be able to do that yeah i i've got some i made several sets of those at different times um every year i made a minimum of three, but sometimes they made as many as seven. I was, I had um, uh, when James Mudd was still alive. Uh, his uh, um, his daughter used to and give. Jenny has a beautiful him. display. Yeah, it. Jenny used to give one to him every year, so she probably got the ones after he passed away. And I actually made extras for her, and she never got them, so I have a few extra bullets for those. <laughs> and then I had one for my grandmother, uh, and, and and I guess. I guess Bonnie got those, um, my cousin. And then I made one, I made two sets for my family and I made one for mom. So of the whole thing? Yeah, every year I'd make I would make copies. I would make like five copies or six or whatever. Oh my gosh. So some years only made three. Have you seen it, Jane? Do you know what he's talking about? Have yeah, you I did I did see it. One day I was in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah he had it. Thing. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Well, let's. That's some, something for the future. I mean, yeah. we we can we can buy. We definitely have the money to buy, fi figure out what kind of case would work. We're going to change out the display in the Laplata room. That would be the display that would go into the Laplata room. Yeah. Yeah. I got a piece of furniture that might be good for displaying that. When I clean my garage out of my house, I've got a piece of furniture that's probably stands about five and a half feet high, two feet by four feet, 
with shelves on it, green, painted green at this point in time. And it's got the little shelf so the things can't fall out of that tray when it's sitting in there. You could take a piece of plexiglass, four feet by eight feet, put a hinge on it on one side, then you can clean close with the plexiglass. I'll take a picture of the next time I'm at my shop and uh, okay. stick this in. The depth of it off the wall is about the only issue. Two feet. Have, if, uh, 24 inches. Because I think I only have... I think I only have four feet in the hallway spaces to go but, around. Yeah, but, 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 but if you put it back in yeah, the recess. Well, where we have the Dr. Owen display yeah, now. Yeah. If that when that comes down in two years, then you know we could easily get a piece of furniture there with the display. Okay. Well, what about the end? Is there an indentation? There is just no, no room in that. Anyway, okay. Barely walk around the dog. Okay. Okay. I would like to. I, I'll keep that in mind. I mean, that that would yeah, be. I would. I think display. we really need to. I think for the next. We really need to do something. If I had but, to go in and shorten those partitions that I installed them, I had to go in and cut a section out and reinstall them because they were just too big. They were just. They took up too much room. I had to make more wall yeah. space. Yeah. Okay. It's just tight in there. Okay. So, matters of information update on model. Buildings for the train. We discussed that. Progress of the restoration of the caboose. Uh, if the restoration of the caboose is going to start approximately on April 21st. So how long that will take, I don't know. But it is it is scheduled to be started um, then or prior to. So we at least have a date. Okay. And the sound system, as I say, we have the materials now. Um, the invoice has been submitted and Rich has met with Donnie, so they've got a handle on that. Any questions on those? So the grounds look pretty good. Somebody's cleaned it up and so forth, but do you want to? I had a comment on that. I was over there a couple of weeks ago to look at the flag, and one of the flags was pretty ratty. Yeah. Michelle is going to, Michelle is going to, she's going to replace the flags. But she's going to wait until a week before the Celebrate La Plata okay. Day and everything. I asked for that because she yeah. keeps a supply of flags, and I'm like, oh my gosh, please do this. Yes. So that that is, and you wanted to move those cement things. We can get we can get Donnie to do that while he's working on the caboose. You want to put and, and they'll need to power wash the um. Uh, yeah. The stone walkway there. That, yeah. But that, and it'll really show up when we move those planters over by the flagpole. The, the point of moving the planters is so that the plants that we have in there can get some sunlight. Mm -hmm. They can't get any sunlight under the Oh, you yeah. want to put geraniums or it's also rolled off if it's uh, stone. Okay. Now, if we do that is also part, if I understand, of the caboose restoration. Okay. That that is not in that bad of shape, except those wheels are looking kind of. They don't like being outside because I think they're they were rubberized at one point. So and I, like I think all of us will be over there periodically when this restoration is taking place with the caboose. So let's make sure that you know bring that up. Anything else on that? The cleaning. Did you? No, the cleaning. As soon as Stuart gets his table out of there, yeah. we will let you know so you can schedule. Oh no, that. You just let Michelle know. That's the thing. Oh. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to interfere. You had to, you had to No, well, I, I had talked to Michelle and she said, right. yeah, she would so, she would do the flags okay, so and then she would have the cleaners in there. You want the window? Can we get, can these people that are coming in clean those windows really good? They're, they're the people that clean here. I'll ask Michelle about that. It'd be yeah. nice if they did. I know, wouldn't it? Because we clean those when we, yeah, that first day, up. Yeah, but we that. haven't done them since. All right, well, I'll, I'll call Michelle. So. And you just let me know when that table's out of there, and okay. then we can handle that. Okay. All right, now, the Christchurch bronze plaque. I think you're doing a great job oh, on that, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Did everybody I think you see that? Yeah. I, does everybody? Yeah. Um, the only question I have on it is an ox cart. And we have discussed that. that. <laughs> She's <laughs> getting the answer. Yes. <laughs> and, um, Actually, I th I didn't even realize I had said an ox cart, but it was two ox cart and two um, 
they carried it to oxen. To, oxen. Not oxen. Well, I guess they're bears, aren't they? Two teams. Yeah, two teams of uh, of oxen and two ox carts. So I guess we can either say buy ox cart or we could say oh, like on, ox cart. on ox cart or we could say um, we could be more specific. I like what you just said. Move to La Plata by ox cart. I like that. Yeah. Okay. By ox cart. Where is it going? Where did Kate decide to put it? She hasn't said. That's why I was saying to um, to Mary Beth, I think we need to get it back to the vestry and and let them make a decision. I did say to Kate, I felt it should be on the front of the building or at the front where people could see it. You know, if it doesn't, but, if you don't want to adhere it to the building, it could be on a stand like the one at the training station. Right, right. And the one at the hosp hospital. The hospital is on a stand. Oh, right. Okay. 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 Um, if I can back up just a second, Jane, please. I called Jane earlier today because you had brought up about the ox part. So we wanted mm -hmm. to look at that so that everything is consistent with the for plaques that are already at Christ Church. So there's not any discrepancies there. So one of the things I brought up to Jane was about where it says established first in Port of Well, one of the Created. Three original Maryland parishes created in 1692, period. Established first in Port Tobacco. So I said, well, established, was it established in 1692 or what is created in 1692? So, okay, because Jane goes to the church there. You know, when you go to church there. So does Stuart and, and me. <laughs> and when you read them over and over again, you know, it's just kind of. Yeah. Forms in your head, but I'm trying mm -hmm. to look at it from somebody that's never, never been in our town, never walked up to that church and wanted to know what it was about. So well, that's why the parish was established before the building was put up. That's okay. Um, actually, the very first time they think there was a church, and this is not positive, yes. was eight. It was 1683. First church believed to be. 1692 was the act of 1692. Um, which laid out the 30 parishes. Oh, I see, okay. And so at that point, Christ Church officially became Port Tobacco Parish. Okay, okay. so now we're so how do you want to do that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's try it. It was the 30 were created in 1692. Yes, it was one of the 30 original Maryland So who, cre who creates the parishes anyway? The guy back in the bishop back in. I thought it was maybe the government or something. I, I don't have that. Place. Okay. The, 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 well, it was the act of 1692. So it must have been some probably a uh, act of the legislature. Legis or something. I don't know. Yeah. When, I, when I looked up creative, here's what I got out of it. To bring into being. Uh, to and then the second one was to invest with an office or title. So that's where we fit the creation part, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it was vested with an office or a title of the Christ Church. Unless you want to say laid, what did I say laid out? Rather than created? Mm -hmm. No, I think laid I out. Not, yeah, not for us. Now, then was it it it's, was established, yes. It was established well, first in Port okay. Tobacco in what year? That's what we need there. Established okay. first in Port Tobacco. Well, Port I don't think we can do that because that was maybe 1683 and that goes before it. With the point what the point I was trying to make was it wasn't originally right here in La Plata. It was first in Port Tobacco right. and then moved by Oxford. And that's what's important. Yeah. Parish created in 1692. In Port Tobacco, in Port Tobacco? No. No. When you say parish, are you You've saying that the parish is just a... When did oh, there that were lots of buildings there. There ended up being a lot, of, I mean, three or four during that time in Port Tobacco. Yeah, and I think the first one was a log building. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And then the one, the one that was renovated 
that they ended up taking apart and moving here, I think was a uh, was a renovation of an existing wooden building. Yeah, there were, and I think there was one between there. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably two between there. I think so. But the but it says the beginning of it, and I can't find it right now. You got it up there. Was was it says you know, Christ Episcopal Church, Port Tobacco Parish. Yeah. At oh, the so top, I don't think we need to you've put got, that. yeah, it yeah. wouldn't be part of the Port Tobacco Parish before Port Tobacco Parish was created. So, even though the church might have existed before that, it wasn't. You're right, it wasn't. So, we can go ahead with that by saying 1692. It was created at that time, even though it existed before. Okay, um, the other thing was I said move to La Plata stone by stone in 1904. That's when they started moving it. They didn't actually have a service until 1905 at Easter. Oh, this is where we come with the train station. It was, not, yeah, we, you we, know, we 1999, yeah. December 30th or something. Same. Yeah, so they got it all ready to burn. So. Yeah. In 92. So it was moved. I, I think it moved was moved in 1904. I would leave that yeah. there. Okay. Because yeah. so you're not yeah. you're, 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 you didn't have a service but it was moved in a right. They were moving it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. The other thing that um, Mary Beth and I talked about, and I said I felt like I ran out of space, was that I possibly it was important to say that the Gothic bell tower was constructed in 1906. There was a terrible fire before that and the church was gutted. It was after just, it was moved to the plate? No. Yeah, right after they, they very moved. soon, yeah. So, um, but so the bell, I don't know. There was no bell tower and there was no bell tower on in Port Tobacco. Right. At all. Right. That, that we was have a creation of, of the 1906. Without yeah. the bell tower. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we and there's pictures of it with the bell tower incomplete. There's no cap or top, or there's no covering on the window. It's just open work. And uh, actually, the uh, bell tower was um, re redone this story. year. Yeah, yeah the, just recently. So, so I didn't know if we had said enough, or if we wanted to put that in there, or whatever. I like and, what I like what you had. Okay. I like okay. what you had. Okay. But. So, so Mary Beth, we are agreed that we said one of the thirty original Maryland parishes created in 1692, mm -hmm. established first in Port Tobacco. I didn't know if first should have come out of there. Moved to La Plata Just by the Ox Park. Stone by stone in 1904. Established in Port Tobacco makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. Established in Port Tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. But that's I. I thought first kind of stuck out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The building wasn't established. The the parish was established. So just yeah. yeah. I don't know. This. One. Um, you guys are the experts. I'm not. One of the 30 original Maryland parishes created in 1692, established in Port Tobacco, Maryland. That sounds good. Port Tobacco, Maryland. Oh, oh maybe Port Tobacco. Okay. We don't have to say yeah. Maryland. Yeah. Established in Port Tobacco. Uh, Move to the Plato by ox cart. By ox cart, stone by stone. Okay. Yeah. Now, now it makes it sound like the parish was moved by Oxford. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> right. right. No, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine, Stuart. Don't get into <laughs> it. Well, see, I, Stuart's, Stuart's gonna, he's the one that he, he's the one. Uh, 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 he's still between 13 okay. and 14 children that died in the tornado. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> and whether the caboose was moved in 99 or 2000. <laughs> I know that was not the caboose, but the building. It was the well, last day of 1999. Yeah. The yes, last day. Of 1999. That's why all my photos were dated 2000, because they were developed in 2000. <laughs> we could probably say building, because we've taken out. That's it, the parish. <laughs> building. Built, oh, wait, 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 wait. One of the parishes parish created in 1692, built in Port Tobacco, Maryland. 
I don't like yeah. built. Well, yeah, if, if you I don't think that's the problem. <laughs> I think that what the problem is, is where, where Stuart's talking about move to La Plata, that it sounds like that there maybe we need to say church moved or building moved or some established whatever moved. You said it yeah, sounds like. Yeah, but, uh, I'm not sure it's really I mean, actually, instead of establish, you could say built and poured tobacco and move to a place. Okay. That that would clear it up. I mean, built certainly clears it up. Yeah. Okay. And you've got this, right? I hope so. Well, it'll come to you. It'll come to y'all. It's going to okay. come to y'all. Okay. It's going right. to come to the three Episcopalians sitting here before it goes anywhere. And then when we, as soon as we agree with it, then I can give it to Kate to have the best. Built in Fort Tobacco, Maryland. And then you're going to put the word and move to. No, place. not Maryland. Built in, in Fort Tobacco. Tobacco. I'm sorry. I would, couldn't we just say built in Fort Tobacco, comma? Comma. I think a comma goes there. I do agree yeah. with you. Actually, once you take that established and put in built, you might have enough space. You, know, you might be able to. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, comma. yeah. That's Move fine. to La Plata by ox cart, comma. Stone by stone. Comma. I don't think we need that. Do, do we need that comma after stone by? He, he put all these commas in there. The, the man that's doing um, Joe, whatever his name is, Gibson. I don't think we need a comment okay. stand by stand. Right. Yeah, but it'll come back to y'all before it goes any further. And then when y'all okay. are done with it, you'll look at it again before it goes to the vestry and so on. Great. Okay. What else is there to discuss? Okay. Good. April 28th, <laughs> we'll come. We will be open again. And so, what do you need us to do? Pretty well in the renovation stages. Do you need us to do anything? I mean, you're going to have it cleaned. Do you need us, you know, do you need, I don't know, do we need to go in there to set up anything or anything before no, the 28th? I mean, the plate of room looks great. Um, Everything looks like it's good. I did stick that uh, stretcher from the caboose in there just to have somewhere to stash it. Um, I wonder why they didn't move. Well, I guess we told them not to take it because maybe Donnie might store that. Donnie could store that with the cushions. He could, or I mean, I could. I got, I got a display about a doctor and about a disaster. So oh, leave, leave it in there. Leave it in there. Okay. <laughs> the stretcher there. Perfect. Okay. Jim, do you have anything to add? <laughs> He's business. like listening to this. <laughs> okay. Well, I thank you. We need a motion to adjourn. Oh, I made that motion. Oh, you already did. Prematurely, but <laughs> okay. I think I made it five minutes after we sat down. So. I'll second. <laughs> okay. Anybody in favor? So, yes. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Well, okay. So you don't need. Excited.